All right, the Dead Man's Tone podcast with your host, Mr. Dead Man and SK, and co host and training. Co host and training, we got uh, Wes. How's it going? Oh, just great. Glad to be here again. Three days of me. I'm sure people are tired by now, but what the hell? <laughs> you know what? Speaking of which, you've been on this show quite a bit and also on uh, Real Monsters, but we haven't really had the introduction. We have You haven't gone to the ringer. No, we haven't really done that, but um, mm. to give your audience a basic introduction, I am the contributing editor, the American contributing editor of London's The405.com. And that is actually spelt in an interesting way. I'll type it out in the chat right now, but it's T-H-E-F-O-U-R-O-H-F-I-V-E dot com. All right. The 405. Slash film. Okay. Um, I mean, they've been active for about 10 years in Britain, and they have writers all over the world, but I'm their first American um, editor of that section. But one thing I like to do with the movies we write on is get into great depth, and I also try to do that with the interviews I do. Mm. And um, one of them was with Kitty Bruce, Lenny, comedian Lenny Bruce's only child, um, and that's part of what's going to tie into our discussion on free speech here tonight. Holy hell. That's right. You mentioned them before. You, you interviewed Lenny Bruce's child. Uh, Kitty. Kitty Bruce. That is crazy. Okay. Wow. Well, yeah, before, before I, we go any and, further, just and I'm pause. also just oh, sorry. Go ahead. I'm also. I also. I am. I am a contributor to the 405. SK is. He has a regular column called Trailer Trash that people should totally check out. <laughs> I Over review there. movie trailers. I dig that title, Trailer Trash. I okay. trash him. <laughs> All right. A few announcements, real fast. Becky's not here to read the ads, but we got to pay the bills. Um, here we go. First one, Extinction Effect, Undead Uprising by Robert Wright Jr. Check out this book, guys. You're going to love it. And then uh, The Hard Goodbye. The Hard Goodbye by Chris Miller. I love that title, by the way. <laughs> yeah, it's a great title. And the cover is cool. There's a, there's a chimp. There's a monkey with a gun. And a lot of money. <laughs> it looks like the cover of like, I don't know, like a lock Th- stock. 13 monkeys or something. <laughs> or something, you know, like a <laughs> snatched or something, you know, like one of those movies. Yeah, it does. But uh, The Hard Goodbye by Chris Miller, you can check that out. It's it's available for, for pre-order now. Um, so go do it, people. The shortest ad's here. <laughs> go check it out. <laughs> All right. Oh, yeah. Now, with that said, uh, let's let's jump right into it. First, Wes, I know you said uh, briefly who you are and what you do, but uh, and don't worry, guys, we'll talk about Operation Choke Point, freedom of speech, spam emails, and horrible covers. But first, let's do the whole thing. So, why why the four hundred five? Like, ex- like why why do that? You know, it is just an outlet for me in terms of my writing, in terms of the research that I just have a drive to do. Um, I strive to very thoroughly annotate everything that we put up there, and it's building it. And, you know, hopefully we can get a bigger compendium of wisdom in there every single week about film and uh, associated topics. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, okay. right. <laughs> well, I don't know. SK seems to disagree. Uh, okay. okay. Oh, he's Man. just being a smart ass with it, but that's why he's here. So, but I mean, you guys, I mean, <laughs> you definitely been at it for a while. Okay. And what's some uh, some? What are some of your like fondest pieces? I mean, you interviewed Kitty, but I mean, what, some other ones. Oh, that Kitty Bruce would definitely be one. I've interviewed. Um, Jonathan Kite, okay. Oleg from Two Broke Girls. Um, who else? Robert Forster, who was the Oscar nominee, who was in Tarantino's Jackie Brown. Um, Underrated movie, by the way. That 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 is a cool movie. <laughs> oh, most definitely. I think he should have won that year. My opinion. Um, who else? Mark Forster, the director. 
He did a Bond film. He did uh, Monsters Ball. Oh wow! Okay. And Christopher Robin was his latest. But Wait, Monsters you know, Ball was the one where Billy Bob Thornton and uh, what's her name had that. Sexy... Halle Bear. Yeah, Hall- yeah, yeah. Okay. Yep. <laughs> I would have never <laughs> pictured those two together, but there you go. <laughs> yep. Oh, absolutely. Oh, and Dexter Fletcher, who we mentioned on Wednesday. Yeah. I've interviewed him as well. Man. And that's just a few off the top of my head. That is very cool. That's very cool. I enjoy it. But yeah, I think the Kitty Bruce interview probably blew my mind the most because Lenny is a hero of mine. And it Yeah, uh, and it it's really cool that they use him as a character in this new uh Amazon series, The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. I agree. Yeah. Oh, I haven't Most checked that definitely. one out yet. I I it's, checked. it's getting quite a bit of awards buzz, but yep, it's good. I it's fantastic. It. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But yeah, but Lenny Bruce is a great person to mention, especially for the discussion of free speech. I mean, damn, his, his jokes, his material. You can't you can't oh. do anything like that today. I mean, do- oh, absolutely. And you look at it where all over the country, the governments literally went after him for the content of his act, mm. for obscenity. Yeah. And that's supposed to be, of course, a no-no in terms of the First Amendment. It's I mean, he was jailed. Be. Yeah, supposed, it's supposed to. to be. But in this day and age, if he was on Twitter saying the jokes he was saying, which, by the way, we could do that in streaming. We could say something. What, what, what is one of his more raunchier bits? Y'all, do y'all know? Do y'all remember? Oh, you know, one thing that really stuck out with me in terms of um, that with the Kitty Bruce interview was when she was talking about her dad's use of the N-word. Oh. And she said that <laughs> she said that one thing that really motivated him with that was seeing the suffering of poor black children around him yeah. when he was growing up. And he said he used it a lot in order to neuter it, to take away its power. And yeah, yeah, and they it, brought that they brought that out in the in the movie about him called Lenny with Dustin Hoffman. They mm-hmm. did that bit in there where he started, you know, he started calling people the N word in yeah. the audience. But then he went on and called you know Spix and Mix and all the other slanders words. And and they it was let's take the power out of this so mm-hmm. it doesn't hurt. Exactly. Yeah, and there's a there's a sort of logic behind that, which is, I mean, you you give the word power, you know. Of course, some people would argue against that. Let me let me change the setting real fast. Something's wrong with the sound. Hold on, hold on one moment. Okay, there there we go. That's... I was getting a bit of an echo on my end. Yeah, I was there still we go. kind of am, but uh, that that will change. It should briefly. I think it's the uh, mm-hmm. the software mixer. It was kind of messing up briefly. Anyway. Oh. Mm-hmm. But I mean, if you were to say, especially that bit, I know which one you're talking about. But there's other ones where he's on stage, being like, you know, has jacket on, and has hands in his pockets, be like, you guys have no idea. I could have guns in my fucking coat right now, you know, shit like that. Oh yeah. He oh yeah. Do that did... today? No, and not at a, all. He had a bit about like uh, you die and someone fucking you while you're dead. Oh no, it's, no, you're in a morgue and someone's fucking your body. And it's like even when you're dead, they still fuck you in the ass. They still fuck you in the ass even when you're dead. <laughs> uh, I mean, you might be able to say that one, but some of his other stuff, man, you say that now, you get barred off of Twitter, you get banned everywhere, and you might even get your PayPal taken away. I mean, your banks will start working with you because of why Operation. Choke point. I Choke think the, point. That's a good segue. Yep. Let's talk about that. Oh, exactly. Operation Choke Point was a um, 2013 initiative in the Department of Justice, um, spearheaded by the Obama administration, to essentially go th- going through the FDIC to put pressure on banks who do business with industries they deem quote high risk, and this included payday lenders. Um, Ammo sales, firearms, uh, escort services, online the gambling. Escorts? Oh man, you're taking the es- you're targeting the escorts. Come on, man. 
And the guns. Uh, pornography, racist materials. Oh. It, you know, that gets into, with the pornography, what the law has battled for, you know, a long time. There's a very famous quote about it from the Supreme Court, which said, I know it when I see it. Yeah. The problem with that is, obviously, it's subjectivity. Oh, What's going to stop them from branding um, erotica, for instance, in literature as just pornography blanket or anything that offends a bureaucrat in power? With that much subjectivity, it just takes the right person or the right group of people. Or in this case, just someone behind the scenes, uh, with the FDIC, if they were to be like, you know what, all those smut uh, erotica books on Amazon, we don't want that. Amazon, mm -hmm. get rid of that. Jeff Bezos might have a big dick and a lot of money, but they're going to be like, oh, okay, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll stop. <laughs> because who's really controlling the money? It's the fucking banks. That's it. Right. <laughs> right, yeah. and that's where they were, gonna, they were going in through Operation Choke Point and essentially choking off access to banking services. Okay, for so in the... So, so, oh. so, so this is effectively... Unelected bureaucrats deciding uh, without any legislation behind them to back them up just to um, mm -hmm. just to uh, isolate these businesses from financial services to drive them out of business. Essentially. I mean, it, going through there. You know, there's a lot of controversy with um, industries like payday loans. You talk to people in the financial world, they'll know that, mm -hmm. or, you know, anybody who gets them. And you know what's interesting, but, Wes? What's, what's interesting, uh -huh. Wes, is that's the first thing that comes up. When you search Operation Choke Point, that is the mm -hmm. first thing that comes up. Because no one, hardly anyone's really going to go root for payday loans. I mean, they're horrible. Well, why do that? So it'd be like, oh, but Operation Choke Point's great. See, we're, we're targeting that. No one, no one cares about them, right? But then there's mm -hmm. other things that are being targeted, which I know you're going to go into. I well, just, I just that's that's the whole point of that's the whole point of uh, censorship is people are you know shrug their shoulders at it when they're censoring stuff that they don't like. Yeah, mm -hmm. but but it once you open that door. It's very quickly going to start censoring what you do like. It's a slippery slope. Oh, very much so. Say. Very much so. Yeah. And, and oh, I, I definitely I agree. I stress this point to other other writers and authors, especially in the horror community. Be like, if you write horror, if you write horror, what makes you think your content wouldn't be targeted if it was deemed offensive? You write about murders, serial killers. You probably have some sexual assault in there. Probably have some rape in there. Probably have some cannibalism. You probably have some yep. horrible shit targeting kids. You have some horrible shit targeting all sorts. You probably have racist monsters. All sorts of crazy shit. Your stuff isn't mainstream and never will be. You're not Stephen fucking King. And even he has stuff that would be targeted. Sorry, I'm going around here. But you know what I'm saying. No, don't I? Don't apologize. I mean, they've done it before, too. You know, you look at literature throughout American history. Um, Allen Ginsberg, the writer and poet, when he wrote Howl, it was a mm. censored book by the government um, in 1956. So you look at even one as famous as Ulysses, James Joyce. They went after that book, too, back when. Yeah. And so many others. So there is a precedent for them doing whatever they can to make an end round an end run around the first amendment. Hmm. And it's just now it's getting more high tech with them putting um, pressure on payment processors and banks. And like I said, what's to stop them from moving something you're writing into that definition of pornography. But what I'm writing is not that bad. What I'm writing isn't racist is what they'll say. Yeah, but you, you look, you don't have to like racist speech or racist writing, but you have to be allowed to legally, you have to be allowed to do that without the government getting involved. Absolutely. And just because a piece of literature might be racist does not make the um, writer 
or even certain um, right. parts of it, certain characters racist. Look at um, William Faulkner's books mm -hmm. had a shitload of racism in there. But he was, you know, the opposite of that. And that was largely his message with a lot of his books was the opposite of racism. But even if you were, like you said, SK, it's not the government's business to regulate it. Right. And that is true. And in, of course, there are still people, probably some in the chat, you hear about it. And bit, by the way, if you're listening, if you have questions, feel free to put them in the chat. I'll monitor it to make sure that they're all asked and all that. Because this is a pretty interesting subject. I'm sure you have some questions. But, uh, you know, usually the comeback mm -hmm. is... But it's not censorship because it's not the government. You know, that's what they will say. They'll say, oh, but it's the bank deciding to get rid of blah, blah, blah. You know, it's – but then um, it kind of is the government because they're the one who gave the FDIC the power to do this. Mm -hmm. To go after him. It, it absolutely is with choke point. If you look at the platforming on the um, social media platforms, so, though – there is a degree of, yeah, because they are corporate, they don't have to abide by the First Amendment. But that's where you have to separate out the moral from the legal. In my True. opinion, morally, they should abide by it. it and and people should demand they abide by it. And there's an interesting thing about that. Uh, Nick Riketa, he was on the show before. Uh, he, mm -hmm. he, he explains legal stuff on his YouTube page, uh, YouTube channel. Great, great channel, by the way. But he was talking about court cases that actually had to involve corporates, uh, corporations, and and their uh, they they encroached upon freedom of speech, and they were found to be in the wrong. Uh, it's it's very few, but they're there. Um, it has to it has to do with like property. Like if you're on the if if you're one of those towns where pretty much it's a corporate town, like the corporation owns everything. You know that they're the name on the property, mm -hmm. everything, even the housing. And someone's over there uh, spewing their religious stuff, like a Mormon's over there, and be like, we don't like it here. Well, guess what? That Mormon's probably going to take you to court and be like, hey, freedom of speech, my religion. Da -da 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 -da. And they're probably going to win. It happened before. It'll probably happen again. I mean, When you have them basically acting in the capacity of the government like you would in a corporate town, yeah, yeah I could definitely see the logic there. Um but with other stuff, it, that just doesn't apply because you also have mm. choice in there. But well, like I said, that doesn't mean that people should not demand it. They should demand it. Yeah, demand it, it, they abide well, by. Well, you know, there's there's a there's some real opportunities for some antitrust work to, um, because you could certainly make an argument that, you know, Google and Facebook and Twitter are monopolies. Oh yes, certainly. and and mm -hmm. they should be they should be broken up like uh, Ma Bell was back in the seventies or eighties or whenever it was, and because they can they can effectively do what the uh, you know what the government did with the banking, and they can choke you out, they can deplatform you and and starve you of your revenue. Mm -hmm. Just mm -hmm. because they decide to. And what's oh, interesting sure. about that? What's interesting about that is not only can those uh, so Twitter and Facebook are like the main ones, right? If you get kicked off kicked off of them, it's like where do you go? You can go to you go to Gab, but Gab's financial situation is kind of a mystery because even they get choked out by PayPal or by payment proce processors. So it's like okay, so where can you go then? Uh, it's it's really hard to make an alternative when the alternatives get, I mean, you get targeted, you get said this and that, and uh, the merchants don't want to work with you. Uh, sorry, but the banks don't want to mm -hmm. work with you. That kills it. <laughs> I mean, I mean, it, it definitely does. Um, I guess part of the problem there, when you talk about um, breaking them up under, let's say, Sherman Antitrust Act is having um, the government come in and effectively regulate portions of the internet. That would be something that, that's, you know, kind of... such a fucking bad idea. Exactly. You know, don't regulate it. Just take, the, just take the monopolies and break them up. But, but would you trust them to do just that? No. Is the problem. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's better than 
regulating. Yeah. Yeah, but what I'm saying is, would you trust them to just stop at doing that? Because mm. I wouldn't. Well, well what's what the alternative? Yeah, what else could you do? Well, and that's where, I mean, it's a tall order, but you're going to have to essentially do what you can to change it with people's demand. Mm. You know, tell people, hey, this is why free speech matters, and you don't, you know, use a block button, too. If you don't like it, just block it. You don't have to call for somebody to be deplatformed just because of that. You know, there's a mute button on Twitter. That why don't true. people just use that? Yeah, you know, good point. That's, that's, I think well, that, because people, because <laughs> individuals and organizations want to see people they disagree with banned. Mm -hmm. They want to get some other, somebody with a big hammer to go out playing whack-a-mole and banning people just because they don't like them. Because mm -hmm. they feel they have a right not to be offended. Yeah. That's a well, big problem. That Which... and they that and they just want to make people shut up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They don't want other, they don't want opposing opinions even existing. No, no, a lot of them don't. But, you know, I think that there is a rather large, somewhat silent majority there who still believes in it. And that's the question there is, how do we get them to speak up more? You know, your average Joe, who would not be cool with that, who just, you know, walks away or just uses that block button for something they don't like. Hmm. You know, I believe the the people that you're talking about, SK, yeah, they're there, but I do believe they're just a very vocal minority. Maybe well, I'm too optimistic. Well, very, very vocal. Very, very vocal. <laughs> very vocal. And they have the ear of other very, even more vocal people. And they have yeah. the tendency to target the, the right journalists who have a tendency to <laughs> target other people, which, by the way... Uh, did I hear the news that a lot of journalists lost their jobs? <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, at BuzzFeed? Yeah. And it's like, yep. it's like cleaning house uh, for op-ed op -ed journalists. Like, well, you write opinion pieces. <laughs> I mean, I guess your opinions aren't valued anymore. Uh, what, you? what totally got me with that, with that whole BuzzFeed thing is, do you realize what counts as usual content on that site? They literally ran a list called Should You Stick This Up Your Butt? Yeah. Well, <laughs> or well, we can know what you should stick up your butt based upon your Zodiac sign. And you're expecting decent journalism out of these people? Yeah. Of course that piece that's, is bullshit. That's what they started off doing was just goofy content. And then some. Then a couple of years ago, some guy came came in and said, let's do news. Yeah, and which is a real bright fucking idea on that side. Can right. we still keep the butt stuff? <laughs> we could still yeah. have the butt stuff, though, right? Oh, uh, exactly. One moment. One moment. Uh, uh, so, all, right, all right, there we go. Yeah, they, they really got out of their um, wheelhouse doing news, and it didn't work. Yeah. They didn't, they didn't know how to do it right. Nope, they didn't, even though they poached the editor from, what was it, The Hill? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I think they went there. Now, yeah. well, take us back on Operation Choke Point, and for those listening who are like, okay, but who else is it really affecting? So it's affecting payday loans, it's affecting prostitution and pornography, but who else? Like, who, like, other creative minds uh, or other businesses is Operation Choke Point targeting? Oh, I am trying to remember the name of that death metal label that they targeted with that. That is interesting. I don't know. If... Because, <laughs> you know, I ask these questions. Sometimes I, <laughs> you know, I know the answer. Uh, that too happened. There's a whole, there's actually two death metal bands that were targeted. Uh, and one was because, well, actually both were the same because of satanic imagery, because they were too satanic. You hear this? These death metal labels had bands that were too satanic, too problematic in that, that they just stopped, the bank just stopped working with the label. So 
I doubt these bands were like making a ton of money, but that doesn't matter. The point is the banks stopped working mm-hmm. with them. I mean, yeah, Elegy like, Records was one of them. What are you supposed to do after that? Like, what do you do? Where do you go? You can't make your own bank. Mm-hmm. No, you're right. You can't. That's a, it's a big problem. And it, with the whole satanic thing, it makes me think, didn't we go through this in the 90s already? Yeah. We did. Freaking satanic panic. And again, if people don't like it, just go the hell away. Go somewhere else. Whatever yeah, happened to man. that in this country? If you don't like the content, turn it off. What about what about the porn? I mean, Pornhub is still very popular. Of porn's everywhere on the internet. It's like the number one business, right? I mean, oh yeah, uh, billions of dollars. So, what bank is going to cut ties with that? Yeah, that would be hard. But if you get the morality police on them, make noise with that. <sighs> Um, yeah, the difference the difference between and it's a good point there, Jesse, the difference between um, payday loans and porn is that porn is a massive business, billions mm-hmm. of dollars mm-hmm. and very, very well established uh, businesses as, as well as plenty of newcomers. But, mm. you know, this is not new business. Um and and it, it's gonna it would be a lot harder to justify shutting that down. Plus, it would piss off the whole world, basically. Yeah, <laughs> the uh, the incels, the incels that the media is talking about, will come out in droves. <laughs> I mean, come on. What, are they gonna, <laughs> what will they do <laughs> if they're not home? If they're not in, the, in their mom's basement, you know, watching their anime porn or hentai, they'd be coming out like, oh man, it'd be crazy. Crazy, <laughs> that that would be yeah. the zombie apocalypse, like the the neck beard apocalypse. Ugh. And even and even when you get people who stand up to what goes on within the FDIC to do something there, they get fired. You know, the FDIC puts this pressure on the banks down where somebody's going to get the axe if they don't. Okay, obey. so I've read somewhere that Operation Choke Point has ended, though, right? Officially, and that's the key term there, officially it's ended. And that means in terms of just government legalese, it's ended. But others say that it basically still exists, just not with so much light on it as when Mm. it was at the Justice Department. You know what? I'm looking at this because, okay, so the First Amendment says... Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion, prohibiting the free exercise thereof, of abridging freedom of speech, blah, blah, blah. So this is Congress. But now, was Operation Choke Point passed through Congress, or was it, a, uh, was it just the president? Just executive Operation act? Choke Point would fall into what's called administrative law, yeah. where essentially bureaucrats make the rules. So no, it was not legislation. It was basically the DOJ Man. who would investigate him in the so, UCFDIC. Some very shifty lawyers got involved in this. They're like, hey, you know what? You technically can do this because you guys aren't going through Congress. You guys are doing it. I mean, mm-hmm. it says Congress. You guys aren't mm-hmm. Congress. Yeah, but. Yeah, but. <laughs> the Supreme Court is <laughs> very fond of of pointing out that the the regulations that are implemented by <laughs> by departments ha- carry the weight of law and so they are de facto uh, laws and are subject to the constitution well and you know SK that's the one thing that was very important with Gorsuch being on that court I don't know if you guys have heard of Chevron deference. No. Wait. That, mm-hmm. that is where the judges put the impetus on the um, challenger to a regulatory point. And they take off, they defer basically against the agency, or for the agency, I'm sorry, for part of that. And mm. Gorsuch does not believe in that. Mm. I'm looking for uh, another article there. So he trusts. It's more of the individual versus the government side there. He sides more with the individual 
with something like Chevron deference. Um, mm. Okay. Yeah. Well, the individual's getting fucked right now, so yeah, anybody who's yeah, willing to right. stand up. Right. Yeah. And te the technical definition of Chevron deference, it's a principle that compels federal courts to defer to a federal agency's interpretation of an ambiguous or unclear statute that Congress, in turn, delegated to one of these agencies. And that's okay. something that, in my opinion, we need more judges who are against that yeah, to yeah. dismantle it. But a bit of a tangent there, I suppose. So what would it take would be... I mean, this would have to be one hell of a lawsuit to me, because you would, you would have to sue. You would have to prove that the banks... Or the FDIC still into these 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 uh, ties with the you know with with your bank behind the scenes. Well, I mean, and it, yeah, um, I and mean, a big part of that too. When you look at the payday loan part of that, the um, FDIC there were emails floating around that talked about particular bureaucrats who just didn't like it, and that was a big reason they went after it. Yeah, I read that in um, the. I think it was American mm -hmm. Banking World. Let's see if I can't find that editorial again while we're talking. Yeah, I mean that happens. I bet some of these people didn't like payday loan operations and was like, you know what, we got to mm -hmm. get rid of them. But it's not illegal. But we got to find a loophole. Okay, let's let's go behind the scenes. Let's tell the banks to cut ties with them. That's what we, that's what we need to do. We need to find mm -hmm. a way to, and it's clever. They assess it, how it, risky. Well, it it is it is very clever. Um, but why, who, what, why the fuck do we not have people running these organizations who have some sense of, I don't know, legality and constitution and individual rights and freedoms, who to say. Yeah, we can, but we really shouldn't. You're talking about you Power SK. So. You're talking about Power <laughs> SK. And maybe you yep. would be the type, if you had a chance to have that power, to pass on it. But some other people would not. Well, it's like Lord Acton said, power has a tendency to corrupt, and absolute power corrupts absolutely. I mean, I would like <laughs> to pretend I'm the better man and be like, I wouldn't. If I had that power, I wouldn't exercise it. But come on, come on. On a bad day, let's say someone cut you off in traffic. Some asshole cut you off in traffic and they were, I don't know, driving a fucking Ford or something or Dodge and be like, that's it. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> You're not going to give her to that, but you know what I'm saying? Like you, Toyota Pius. A Toyota yeah. <laughs> freaking Prius, man. That's it. We're done with the Prius. I tell the banks we're done with the Prius. But green. Fuck green. We're done with it. He cut me off. <laughs> you know? Yep. Uh, I mean, that probably happened with the death metal bands. My son's listening to these awful death metal bands. Won't stop. It's just satanic all over the place, which I'm surprised. Um, because I that sounds more like a, like a right-leaning thing to do. But, uh, mm -hmm. but, and I say that because it seems, I don't know. This this whole thing came through, and not that we get political on this show or anything, but it, this kind of kind of goes into that a little bit. But this passed under Obama, I would think it'd be like more like left leaning shit, not like we're about sat satanic death metal bands, shit. Well, but that's the you, problem what, when you open the box, you open, right? You open, yeah, you open the door, and you know, the, one guy he's pissed at payday loans because his wife works there, ex. <laughs> wife works there who know who knows what and then the guy in the next cube goes well shit if that's gonna work let's shut down this death metal band that my daughter is a roadie for <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah, yeah it's definitely not something that is just a part of one side or the other yeah I mean, unfortunately both sides think they can shut down speech they disagree with and you give them the hammer they effectively can because mm -hmm. you cut off the money, 
you cut off everything. They can't afford attorneys. They can't afford lawyers. So they're not suing right. anybody. That's it. How would they right. even know? They wouldn't I, even know. I, I, they wouldn't. <laughs> they would never know. Oh, right, and that is a big, big problem. And that's where I've noticed it with some people, too. They're kind of... The definition of speech is becoming more and more narrow to a lot of people when it should be growing. That's how the government is forced to look at it. Speech is broadly defined in terms of the First Amendment. You know, how you spend your money is largely speech. And a lot of people don't want to admit that because of things like dark money in politics, but yeah, it is. It's speech. I mean, when money buys speech... I mean, that's the logic there, right? Money yeah. is speech? Yeah, how I decide to spend my money is speech. And the same with you and SK and everybody else. Yeah. Now, do we know of anyone else that was targeted? Um, I don't. I can't think of any, any writers or authors that were targeted by this. I can think of some uh, creative minds that were targeted by Operation Choke Point. Um, the YouTubers, definitely. Well... Well, there's one. Uh, I don't know if you know what. I don't know how far that goes. Like, do y'all are y'all familiar with like YouTube, like Sargon of Akkad? A little bit, yeah. Okay. Like, I don't know if you agree or don't agree with what the stuff he says. He he he's a guy hmm. who tries to pretend like he like he's very intellectual. He's a British dude, so people already think he's like really intelligent because he's you know he's British. Okay. Who is this guy? He's a dropout. Uh, Sargon of a car. A high school dropout. He talks about philosophy and like uh, politics. But he, uh, he pissed off a lot of people because he says yeah, he's kind of like a provocateur. I mean, the guy was got pretty close to Milo Yiannopoulos. I mean, he's a provocateur. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah and, he was, he'll say things on purpose just to get a rise, just to get attention. Like, he'll say words I can't say here. Like, when he's having a, de- a debate with Richard Spencer, uh, mm-hmm. a lot of people, he'll say, like, oh, all you, all you white nationalists are acting like a bunch of white N-words. It's like, well, Sargon, you can't be saying things like that, you know? But mm-hmm. long story short is that, he built a career off that, you know, and then he gets kicked off Patreon. Mm-hmm. He goes to an alternative version called, um, what was it called? Some subscribe star or something. But because he went there, because of his reputation, the banks that were, you know, handling the transactions for that platform cut ties with the whole platform. <laughs> so all the Jesus. other content mm-hmm. creators that were on that platform, subscribe star, were fucked. Yeah, I essentially. Mean, and I think that one, uh, I believe there's a an attorney that's trying to do like a, like, a, you know, do some legal action with that because that's clear as day. That wait a second, so you got kicked off Patreon, a uh, Patreon, and you go to another place, and then the uh, the banks behind the scenes cut the ties to it. That you know that's. How- it, it, it makes you wonder if Patreon kicked them off because the banks were threatening them. Actually, that's it. That's exactly mm-hmm. it. That came. That information came out too. They didn't want. They didn't necessarily want to get rid of them. They even told them. In fact, even more information came out. They were like, "All you have to do is apologize. If you apologize, you'll be you you will be okay." At least that's what they said. Who knows if that would have been all yeah. it takes? Sometimes mm-hmm. you apologize and they want more, but. You know, I say a lot of shit on the show. I publish a lot of crazy stuff. I'm going to offend people. I'm going to offend people all the time. I don't mean to, but I'll apologize. Oh, yeah. It, like, the other night, we had a show about abortion. I'm sorry. Um, you know, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm sorry that we had that topic, but we talked about it. We were civil. What can I tell you? We move on. We're, we're talking about something else now. Talk about speech. Mm-hmm. You know? And make amends, you move on. You don't dwell. But oh, absolutely. And it's like you say, it's hard to avoid, you know, offending everybody. I mean, you can't be every all things to all people. 
But that also gets back to people thinking that they have a right to not be offended. Oh, man. Yeah. SK, you have something to say about that? <laughs> yes, I do. Yeah, it's you don't. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. I mean, it, 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 you, you could spend 100,000 words on it, but it all comes down to, no, you don't. You really don't. Right. You really don't. And Is, even if you did, why would you want it? You know, we wouldn't have some of the greatest revolutions in history without somebody getting offended. Of course not. <laughs> you couldn't have I mean, a it, revolution, period, without offending someone. I mean, right. if, if that's what you want, a right to not be offended, then that's it. If you want that, then you want the government to be, it'd be like a brave new world. It'd be like that, you know? People would give yeah. it, uh, Soma. To this listen, comment. listen. The people, the people who want to shut down offensive speech, think it's all fine and dandy as long as their people are doing the shutting down. Right, right. Oh, exactly. When, when the shoes on the other foot, they're fucking pissed about it. But the problem is, is that one group gets in power and they set up these rules and they, yeah, we like this. We can, can we can piss on all these people we don't like and then they lose power and they're like what the fuck why are you doing this to us and it's like hey you made the rules <laughs> mm-hmm. oh yeah and you know to be clear i consider myself a first amendment absolutist with a lot of things mm-hmm. but that doesn't mean that it extends to something like the typical example yelling fire in a crowded theater or right. or even something like legit libel and the oh, way yeah. that that, or, that or yeah. legit threats. Yeah, yeah, which would be close to yelling fire, you know, inciting yeah. violence. Yeah, basically. which kind of gets into another area where, you know, people say well, free speech, which we're segueing to free speech, sounds like, which is great. Let me just put that here, here, man. You know, when they say free speech, but what about hate speech? What about, like, speech that's like direct violence? Like, if I'd be like, if I were to say, and I mean this in a hypothetical, Hypothetically, I want all people wearing black shirts to be dragged out of their cars and beaten. Hypothetically, like that that could be that could be, you know, I'm calling yeah. for violence, you know. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, there's a very strict standard there though. One thing I'm a firm believer in with that kind of speech is that it can usually be counteracted by more speech. That's the thing. When you look at the First Amendment and speech that you don't like, it can usually be counteracted. Well, yeah, but like, like, like just there, like I, I, I kind of made it in the context of of a joke as an example, right? Um, but if I were to say I want SK to stab Becky in the face with a with a knife, now do it. <laughs> And he did it. I mean, I'd be held. I'd, I'd be responsible for that. Can I wait till she's not sick? I think I he's shaking his boots sick. over there. Even better. I don't want. I don't want to. I don't want to get the flu. Okay, I'm a riskier. <laughs> this this could happen. Didn't actually want the happen. Plague. This could actually happen. I want Becky to smother her brother with a pillow. Now that could probably happen. Right. And if it did, well, I, if it does, mm-hmm. then I'm, you know, I'll be in trouble. So I mean that hypothetically, guys. Hypothet- hypothetically. Um, sorry, sorry. But uh, you know, other things you brought up was like you know yelling, f- you know, fire in a movie theater. You don't say that because someone can get hurt and trampled, right? That's that's what they say. Mm-hmm. I mean, hell, imagine going to a school being like, oh my god, there's an active shooter, dude. You're done. Same you're thing. Done. Yeah. Yeah. You go into a mall, be like, "Oh my god, active shoot!" You go, just yell uh, "gun," just yell "gun." Oh man, there was this guy that live streamer got in fucking trouble. He uh, texts a speech shit, and you know what that is? Where like someone like donates money, and like texts the speech, and like it, it says it. Let me, let me tell you. Uh, the, I'm gonna <laughs> give you a long story in a very short way. Okay, so the guy goes to a university, and he has a speaker. It has a whole setup like live stream on him, right? In the backpack. And he has a setup where people donate money. It says something to the speaker, whatever the person puts. Uh, and the person, someone put, like, there's an active bomb threat and the bomb's gonna detonate 
and f- it did the countdown. It did a whole countdown from five, four, three, two, one, into the explosion, everything. Man, people are running. They're running out of the classroom, freaking out, freaking the fuck mm-hmm. out. And this is all on YouTube. It was being live streamed for everybody. Mm. Wow. And of course, the guy wow. was arrested. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. So, right. yeah. let's talk about freedom of speech. <laughs> Sorry. I'm a drunk segue into that. Can, can we, is that okay to talk about? <laughs> <laughs> no. Ask Big Brother, he'll let you know. Yeah, freedom of speech. You know, Don't leave home without it. <laughs> one, you know, the thing is, is that uh, when you talk about hate speech and, and freedom of speech uh, and uh, speech that is offensive, you want to see some really f- offensive stuff. <laughs> Read some of the pamphlets that were going around pre-revolution. Oh, sure. Yeah. <laughs> Pain's common sense. Right. You know, a bunch of them. Yeah, it was meant to be inflammatory against the tyrannical rulers, as it should be. Yeah. And you just, you can't have that when you don't have a First Amendment, you know? And and the thing is, is that, you know, we have people trying to shout down speech that they disagree with. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Uh, you know, not relying on the government to do it necessarily. Um, mm-hmm. and, and Twitter, Twitter, I would like this guy removed, Alex Jones. He talks about lizard people and he denies Sandy Hook. Have them removed and, and they do it. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It gets back to why don't they use those things in there? Why don't they use the, per- the features to customize it? Which yep. gets back to again, why don't they just walk away? You know, well, because walk away from the be- speech because they don't they don't want to separate themselves from it. They want him silenced. Silencing is the new censorship. It's the it's the groupthink censorship. It's not enough to just walk away, which you and I would do. Is like, well, I don't I don't like what that guy is saying. I'll just move on. They want that guy to never be heard again. We right. Would. We would That's all because walk uh, away. We would all walk away. Uh-huh. Said so, like all three of us here would walk away in that situation. But Absolutely. They these people would want the other person to be removed. Is that like to me that just sounds like entitlement. Uh, with my You know, I think kids, a big part of that is in a lot of um colleges they're teaching that that sort of speech is equivalent to physical violence. Oh my god! Yeah, the only yeah. reason, and you know what? For example, I know someone's going to bring this up. The only reason why I haven't dropped the N word is because because the reaction it's going to get. Okay, uh, but that's <laughs> it's not the mm-hmm. same thing. It's not. It's not. Oh my God! Of course, someone that would be an argument. That would be a debate. Hey, that would be a debate. We can have a debate on the show. I know. Oh, you know what would be great for that debate? Wrath. Mm. Let's have Wrath on here debate someone who'd be like, you know, using the N word can uh, decrease the power of it. No oh, man, using right. the N word at all it makes it have power. Yeah. You shouldn't use it at all. But it couldn't come from. It couldn't come from any of us. I'm just saying. Look, look at her skin tone. Mm-hmm. Man. It just it just wouldn't sound right. It wouldn't. It it would not be good. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Well, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Well, and what that boils down to is that we have the ability to censor ourselves too. <laughs> yes, yes. It's like George Carlin said with the um, infamous seven dirty words when they were fighting that out with the FCC. The mm-hmm. FCC says that you cannot censor yourself. That you cannot regulate yourself, and thereby they are banning these words across you know the airwaves. Yeah, that's true. By the way, you know what the seven dirty words are? Sam. Well, Sam. Shit, piss, fuck, cunt, cocksucker, motherfucker, and tits. Oh, that's it. We're kicked off stream me. <laughs> <laughs> they, don't they, now. they don't care. I, was, I, I had only... to learn those when I was in radio. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm sorry, guys. I interrupted. Uh, you guys oh, Carlin's bit on the... 
Colin's bit on the seven band words is hilarious mm-hmm. and brilliant. You know, there's a tie in there with Lenny Bruce too. When he was um, busted at one of his gigs for obscenity, there's there was a, a young kid, um, Lenny. Bruce? Lenny, yeah. When he was busted, there was a young kid in the audience who they ended up throwing in the paddy wagon along with him because mm-hmm. he refused to show his ID. He said, I don't believe in ID. You know who that was? It's Carlin. <laughs> Whoa, really? Yep. Man. Huh. It was. It was George and, Carlin. And he uh, was just a kid in the audience, huh? I don't he, believe basically, in ID. Basically, yep. I don't wow. believe in ID. And he, and he rose to fame as a, as a comedian. Which, if George Carlin was still around today, his act could not be done. And he was he was on the other side of the spectrum, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, I try not to get political mm-hmm. here, but you know what I'm saying, you know what I'm saying. But um, that's crazy. Yep. Well, Car- Carlin, was, Carlin was, he kind of leaned libertarian in a lot of his thinking. Yeah, that's true. Uh, civil libertarian, yeah, I would agree. Most definitely. He's a genius when it came to language, too. Yeah. I mean, his act would definitely not be allowed to be played at a, at a college campus. I mean, if Seinfeld... Oh, I don't camp, doubt it. If Seinfeld is deemed racist now? Man. Yeah. Okay. Well, and look at it before that, when Jerry Seinfeld said he wouldn't play the campuses anymore. That was before that article came out about Seinfeld being racist. Didn't Chris Rock say that, too? That oh, he wasn't yeah. playing them? They all do. Um, mm-hmm. You know, I listen to a lot of the Rogan uh, Rogan podcasts. He talks about it all the time. Like, you know, not he, he doesn't even play at those college campuses, but they used to be really great gigs because that <laughs> was yeah. That's where a lot of comedians, you know, really honed their craft was on college campuses. Oh yeah, yeah, and and, and, yeah. and the 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 fucking punks on in college and the professors have made it so that you know it's just not it's not even safe to go there you're right mm-hmm. which kind of goes back to what you guys were talking about yep. before i interrupted which is it's kind of like the college uh the professor of the college kind of getting the kids and pretty much effectively kids i was about to say teenagers but kids to believe that that words are the equivalent of physical violence that if someone says fuck you uh bitch it's like the worst thing ever um but Mm -hmm. it's right it's not like and that and then it must any any speech you disagree with must be eliminated Mm -hmm. oh man these motherfuckers never played on xbox live (laughs) that's their problem (laughs) i mean jesus oh i bet (laughs) i yeah, I don't know how we turn that situation around too when they keep producing more of them through the colleges. Well, and hopefully there'll be a revolution against this sort of safe space thinking, which is a whole yeah, other thing. Yeah, I don't yeah. know. Honestly, I, Wes, it's a it's a it's a good question because I they have such a chokehold on the jobs, yeah, professorships and the administrative jobs. That I don't see the only way that it can be changed is competition. Yep. And uh, you know, uh, well, probably got probably men because for one thing, men are in a decreasing uh, percentage of uh, of uh, college students these days. Every year, the number goes down. Mm-hmm. That's true. That's yeah. true. Definitely for psych, by the way. <laughs> it was like the ratio. Yeah. Of oh, to, Jesus. To five. It's, it's terrible. Yeah, it's terrible. Um, so, you know, somebody uh, people are going to somebody with the monies is going to figure out that there's a market for, you know, the kind of education that we used to get in this country. And mm-hmm. people will start going to that. And that's the only way. You can't change the existing institutions. They're too entrenched. Yeah. Yeah, and it, I would hope as sort of an aside to that, that the professors who may be left-leaning but are not the thought police like their colleagues would speak out to. 
Yeah. So I know they're out there. I've had a few of them. Well, look what look what fucking happened over here, just down the road from me in Olympia, with these uh, these two professors, who, you know, the, it, it uh, God, what was it, Western something mm-hmm. down in Olympia, where they were having the students wanted to have this thing where you know, you know, no white people should come to school today. They or something oh, like that. And they yeah. said, and these two professors, and I think they're a husband and wife, they said, this is stupid. <laughs> Evergreen College. Mm-hmm. Evergreen. Ever- oh, man, that's a huge clusterfuck. Oh, yeah, I followed, <laughs> I followed that one all the way through. I, first of all, by the way, I love following uh, dumpster fires like that because it's entertaining to me. But it's just, wow, holy shit. It, it, mm-hmm. was, such, it was such a fuck up. And, and these were liberal professors. They just mm-hmm. didn't, like you say, they just said, had enough brain cells to say, uh, this is stupid. And, <laughs> and the, oh, the whole campus blew up over that. Yeah, it that was the campus, Evergreen College. They had a day. They had a day. It was one day. It was, it kind of sounds like a silly tradition, but it's done, I guess, to kind of show the importance of minorities, I guess. It's mm-hmm. downward on that day. If you are a minority, you can choose to leave the campus. You can choose to not attend, and that's okay. You'll be excused. But then, what they decided to do that day, instead of doing that, is make it the reverse. Or like white people can leave. But they decided to make it to where if you didn't choose to leave, then you were being hostile because you weren't participating. But it's like, well, that's not the point of the whole thing. Like, you didn't even have to leave either if it was the other way. Like, you could if you wanted to, I guess, to show your significant... I mean, now I just put my foot in my mouth right there because it's a landmine. But it's it, it's an option, and we have to teach a class. What are you talking about? Yeah. And, and mm-hmm. Man, last thing I checked in is that college is still, like, <laughs> burning. <laughs> uh, that college is still <laughs> fucked up from that. They haven't well, recovered. Yeah, the, the college the universities across the country are facing um, uh, implosion. Basically, mm-hmm. they 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 keep doubling down on these uh, on this political correctness, speech control, sexual harassment, kangaroo courts. Mm-hmm. And you know, gender whatever studies and uh, toxic masculinity, and then they wonder why kids don't want to go there. It's very true. In in the men, you mentioned earlier that it's you, like men have dropped going to college, and like the men that do go, it's going to be like in things like engineering or uh, yeah, in, in that related field, which. I, to me, it's if I had like, a go ahead, uh, like I, I don't know, maybe you can correct me. But like those classes, those fields, are they like shielded from this other stuff? Because no, they're not. Okay, Mm-mm. so are no. they get in the so same classes. Th- there have been there there have been recent cases of universities requiring incoming freshman men to attend uh, orientation type sessions where their their toxic masculinity is explained to them. Oh and God. and all the ways that they're wrong and what they need to do about it. Man. If I had a college-age son, I would not let him go to school, college. Maybe Man. online, but not... Mm-hmm. I would not let him set foot okay. on a college campus. I realize we kind of segued into, into college, which goes into freedom of speech because in, in the fact that this kind of this is kind of the reason why this explains the reason why we have uh, this demographic that's all about uh, that's opposed to freedom of speech, opposed to the idea of that you can just block or mute someone. They want people to be silenced. They want the words to be silenced. They want but, freedom from speech. Yeah, basically. <laughs> now, what about with creative minds, especially let's say like horror writers? And some that would be listening, be like, yeah. oh. Well, I don't write anything that's that bad. So, what does it matter to me? Um, 
Mm-hmm. Like, say, To Kill a Mockingbird? That was... That so, was, To Kill a Mockingbird banned, is wasn't it? not... Yes, yeah, some schools are banning it. Oh, yeah. That's another one to add on the list. Like I said with Ulysses, um, hell, Huckleberry Finn was on it. Oh, at right man. Point. I didn't catch that. That's right. Uh, first of all, Ulysses is a classic. Recently, recently, yeah. Some schools mm-hmm. are... Schools are starting to ban books because people get their little feelers, hurt, you know, hurt, and they think they're not supposed to ever be exposed to anything that's controversial. Hmm. But apparently, I don't. Maybe it's just it's probably just from my obviously from my perspective. But uh, when I was a kid, I first exposed to Huckleberry Finn. Uh, Huckleberry Finn. That's it. Then sorry, mm-hmm. a little bit of too much beer, but uh, <laughs> I was like, it, when I uh, stumbled upon the inward part, I of course then maybe it's because of white, but that's, it, that's, it, it's pretty it, shocking as a kid. It's isn't like, it? what is this word? Oh, wait, I heard of this word before. <laughs> huh, that's weird. yeah. But it, it's in the course. The teacher would explain it's used in the context in that day. Even she would like kind of skip over that word it was kind of an awkward part it just kind of like stopped the movie and then we kind of kind of read it all together in class like wow that's weird you skipped over that <laughs> you know mm-hmm. so i was like oh wow that kind of yep. shows the change of the times kind of and, and that was a point of the story like you have this white kid mm-hmm. who has to he, he's he becomes friends with well People that society yeah. didn't care for, and uh, right, Rush had a song about that, which was very telling. Okay, sorry, oh, I'm, I'm sure I'm everywhere <laughs> on that one. <laughs> I'll, I'll, just, I'll just drink my Stein. Y'all go. <laughs> you know, this also reminds me of um, Spike Lee, Black Klansman, out now with that. Have you guys read anything on? Him and um, D.W. Griffith's Birth of a Nation? No. I have not. And by the way, I, I did it. A- sorry, y'all continue. I'm going to be right back. Y- y'all, y'all continue. Yeah. All right. <laughs> but, you know, that's one. Th- I mean, Birth of a Nation is a virulently racist movie. Came right. out in 1915, but like Spike Lee said, his problem was never that they showed it. His problem was that they showed it, but they didn't explain the context of it at his college in oh. New York. And, it, you know, it was a huge, huge influence on Black Klansmen when he did that. But, you know, it, it's, it goes to show as another example there. You don't have to want it banned. You should talk about it. You should learn from this sort of thing. Exactly. And which is my... Uh, position with these people wanting statues removed. Don't mm-hmm. no, don't remove those. Do not remove those. They need to be there. They need to be symbols that you can point to as a reminder of what things used to be like. That's why they kept mm-hmm. Auschwitz and Dachau, not mm-hmm. because they're. Um, positive reminders, but because they're so fucking negative, you can't, you don't dare let them be forgotten. Oh, exactly. You know, it, and with the statues, I don't have a problem with it if they wanted to move them to museums, but I think just taking them down and getting rid of them doesn't make a lot of sense, you know? Right. And well, it's, it's interesting. I think the whole mentality is this attempt to whitewash, uh, erase history. You mm-hmm. know, pretend history didn't happen. But you can't do that. And even if you did, it's like then you don't learn from it. I mean, exactly. Mm-hmm. Look, history can be, I guess, offensive and triggering depending on where you are, where you come from and all that, but it, it's, I'm sorry, but it's done. It's the name is in itself. It's history. Like, it, man, it's nothing but conquest, taking over people, using people, building nations and uh, man. Yeah. Yeah. 
We happened. The thing people don't understand is we have we live since World War II. We have lived in this bubble of peace and prosperity like never before in history. Yeah, mm-hmm. and 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 it's we're so used to it that people think that that must be what it has always been like, and it and how it's supposed to be everywhere. When when in fact this is such a fucking aberration in the history oh, of human so much his, so. It, <laughs> and, that and the thing it's, is, it's it's astonishing that it ever happened it, it really is and i don't know if it's so much that we've gotten more peaceful as it is politicians have gotten better at hiding that's the it. wars i was gonna say because police well, actions look how many of those have been going on like, like for years now, I I had no idea. Like last year, I, I, was it last year or the year before that, that we have troops in Africa, like shoot yeah, up, yeah. like in active yeah. combat. And I'm like, why the mm-hmm. fuck do we have troops in Africa? Like I I didn't hear about this. Like where was this in the yeah. main stream media? Nowhere. I saw one article and like it said that there were like training, active training, whatever. But it that well, didn't look yeah. like training to me. They were they were shooting at other people. What was going on there? <laughs> They're being shot yeah. at. Um, so I'm just like, okay, we have boots on the ground in Africa now. <laughs> okay, but yep. even even with that, even with all of that, the the past fifty years have been more peaceful than mm. damn near any point in history. Oh, yeah. Um. And the thing that that encourages peace is prosperity and trade. Mm-hmm. The more prosperous and people are, and the more tr- you know peaceful trading partners they have, the less likely they are to want to fuck that up with a war. Yeah, right, right. Where um, dollars don't cross national boundaries, boots and guns tend to. Right, that does happen, and 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 wars are started to take shit from other people. Mm-hmm. Yep. Huh. No doubt about it. And yeah. so, if you're doing good, you don't need to take shit from other people. <laughs> oh, exactly. Okay. Now, I might be the slightly intoxicated one here, but now we're talking about <laughs> wars and World War Two. Um, but it, it does kind of relate to freedom of speech because how do we get here? We're right? exercising it. <laughs> yes, <laughs> we yes. are exercising that freedom. Uh, but I'm sorry. You, no, you know, no. like uh, like I think it was Jefferson said, "Eternal vigilance is the price of liberty," and people have to be more vigilant nowadays in in understanding things and taking in more media. Now, the reason why I said what I said is because some people listening will probably be like, what's going on? And I'll tell you why. (laughs) Because horror writers and other writers probably be like, how does this relate to me? That's how it usually boils down to. Okay. Uh um, The reason why no one has made a huge fuss about what you write, and I'm talking to you who's listening, if you are a horror author, is because no one has really read your stuff, or at least not the right person. But I mean right person, I mean the right person would be the wrong person. The wrong person. Yeah. Yeah. if it was someone that got offended by your work, maybe they just leave a one-star review. You probably know who I'm talking about. But imagine if that person had... Maybe they didn't want to just leave a one-star review. Maybe they wanted to see your work burn because you have a racist character. You have a rapey character. You have a main character who's not feminine or who's not feminist or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, or it's an ex. <laughs> yeah. You use he and she when it should be they and Z and Zar or whatever the fuck is going on now. Um, <laughs> so it, it could be anybody, man. And when they come for you and they say, you know what? We don't like what this author's writing. Blah, blah, blah. We can get rid of them. It can happen. And it's happened before. And there is a guest I want to bring on or a topic I want to talk about. Um, the horror comics back in the 40s and 50s. I didn't realize this. But you know, like the the uh, the Comic Code uh, Authority, which censored comics, right? 
Mm-hmm. That was in response because of how raunchy comics were getting. And a lot of it was horror comics, too. They were getting kind of crazy. I mean, you can get kind of crazy if you're allowed to have, like, dead bodies, zombies, and Dracula doing shit, whatever. But um, they didn't like it. They wouldn't respond to it. So they did. They actively censored it. I mean, that's not really the government stepping in. That's kind of like a, like a, I guess an organization coming together, be like, okay, we got to tone it down, guys, before the well, government. Well, you know why in. they, ha- those types of organizations are set up to specifically to keep the government from doing it. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. The Motion Pictures uh, Association, the MPAA, was exactly that. But isn't that a weird rope in, though? Isn't that a weird con? Because if it's written the yeah. First Amendment that the government can't, then why would you even have the delusion that they could? It's like you got sucked in into a fucking horrible deal, and now you have to worry about this organization of non-government people acting like the government. You censor yeah, yourself. Yeah. You shot yourself on the fucking foot. <laughs> well, and that's a big part of it, and I think it also gets into, you know, people's attitudes toward the Constitution. Man. It is people in power's attitudes. Well, you know, George W. Bush once said of it, it's just a goddamn piece of paper. Well, he did. He <laughs> did. We'll see how it handles, uh, you know, how the court looks at it. Mm-hmm. Uh, because and, and, and the thing that you don't, every now and then somebody will accidentally say that, the truth, and that is that the people in government, elected and not unelected, t- often view the Constitution as something they have to get around to yep. do what they want. View it as an obstacle. Exactly. It's an obstacle t- to them achieving their aims. Like they obviously mm-hmm. did with Operation Choke Point. Because I guarantee you the attorneys... Because I'm sure, because they're all lawyers, right? A lot of them are lawyers. I'm sure they read that was like, wait, that might be some wiggle room. Which, it, it's not going to save them if the right uh, judge were to look at it. But they took it. Anyway. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, wow, man. If you, don't, if you don't stand up now and oppose this kind of shit when it's somebody you don't like it's going to be too late when it happens to you or somebody you do like yep what was that saying from mm-hmm. world war Two? they came for the socialists they came for the jew yeah and i wasn't there i didn't say anything yeah yeah, yeah. that's true i mean that's that's what's happening now I mean, and, and you see it with freedom of speech Let's talk about how this talk uh, how this relates now with social media with like Twitter and Facebook. I know I think we touched on this a little bit, but like, so like someone like Alex Jones says something you don't like, just mute him, block him, but you kick him off. I mean, what the fuck? Like he's allowed to say what he said. You know, I'm one thing with that. One way that I handled it personally, there was another site that both SK and I wrote for, which we did satire for it. Mm-hmm. Um, and unfortunately, it's shut down now, but I did an article about um, Alex Jones being a PCP-addicted beaver. <laughs> he finally comes out as that. Man. In, well, that's how you do it, you know? What's funny that, uh, is, like, uh, Alex Jones, like, I, I'm, not a, I'm not a fan of the guy, but, but, but by the way, if you want to hear a, a Joe Rogan podcast that's hilarious, you got to listen to the one where, where Alex Jones is on there. It is fucking wild. Oh, dude. my God. He gets, oh, I bet. He gets stoned and high. He's talking about intergalactic space vampires. I'm like, what the <laughs> fuck are you talking about? You know what tap water is? It's a gay bomb, baby. I'm just like, and Twitter, and Twitter wants to cut his speech because what now? I mean, just let him talk. He makes himself look like a like a character. That's right. That's right. The worst thing you can do to some of these fringe people is just to let them talk. They will oh, yeah. dig their own graves, <laughs> metaphorically. Like, you know, he life. actually admitted that the Jones persona is nothing but that. It's a persona. 
I think it was in the um, lawsuit with yeah. the Sandy Hook parents where he said that. Mm. That evidently he doesn't really believe any of it. It's just, you know, an, a character he's playing. Okay. And it's still sick and degenerate, but that doesn't mean we censor it either. I will admit, know? some of it's kind of funny. There, there was a part, uh, <laughs> I think one bit I was watching, I, I was thinking around this part where he's, he was wearing like a mask, like a lizard mask or whatever, and he put off the mask. <laughs> Under that mask was yet another lizard mask. I was like, what the <laughs> fuck? <laughs> the whole time? Because he goes on these huge rants, right? I mean, the guy has the energy of like, he should be like, if he had the body for it, like a WWE wrestler or something, he goes on and on. He never stops. Um, <laughs> he just rants on forever. Mm-hmm. Jesus Christ. Man, yep. but he gets stuck. My problem with him is he gets stuck in these stupid conspiracies that, like the Sandy Hook one, did him in. Like, dude, you should have just come out and be stay like, man, of, I fucked up on that. Out, just, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just even, stay out of that shit. Even on this podcast on on the on the YouTube channel, we did a show on that. We had a guest on who argued against it, say it was like a conspiracy, and I prepped mm-hmm. for it, man. I did. I read the police reports, which, yeah, they're police reports. And guess what? You can easily find them. Uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> they're, because they're part of the conspiracy is you can't find them. Do, 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 do. It's like, no, you can, you can easily find them. It's right there on the fucking state <laughs> site. What the fuck are you talking about? Exactly. Uh, I looked at the crime scene photos. I looked at the crime scene videos. Dude, I've seen so much stuff. Uh, I try mm-hmm. to even get around because a lot of stuff is redacted. Like they're not going to show dead bodies, okay? Right. I tried to even dig mm-hmm. to see if I could find leaked stuff. So, I mean, I saw the bullet casings on the ground. I saw the blood on the wall. I saw. I didn't see any autopsies or dead bodies. Not gonna lie about that. But mm-hmm. I did see blood on the wall, and that's how blood looks. It's not Hollywood, okay? Um, yep, it happened, man. People don't want to. People don't want it. Want to believe that it happened. They want to say that the dad was an actor, just the way he reacted. And I know what they said before. Oh, you're on. What, what, what could that mean? <laughs> Maybe he's up. It's his turn to be on the mic. Mm-hmm. And if that was me, if my kids just died <laughs> on the microphone, I guarantee you, I'd be like, "You motherfuckers, fuck yourself." But that wasn't me. It was him. Maybe mm-hmm. he was coached. Maybe he was like, you know, are you good now? Are you good to talk about this? I don't I don't know. But you can mm-hmm. check the death records. It happened. It happened. But he went on with it. He was said it didn't happen. What the yeah, fuck? Yeah, he, oh, he doubled and tripled and quadrupled down on its bullshit. Yeah. Palette. At that point I was like, Man, Alex Jones, dude, you I like you when you're all about like lizard people. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Turn the frogs uh, gay. Go back to that. Come on, man. <laughs> you're seeing you're seeing kids in a dive, man. <sighs> Go back to the moon landings, <laughs> fake. Or like, turn so. the friggin' frogs gay. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but and that's the thing about uh, freedom of speech, though. Like, you know the the point I brought up with Alex Jones. Like, I brought up Sargon of Akkad, which you guys don't really know about too much. But it's like you don't have to agree with what they're saying. You know, no, not at all. And, and right now, right now, as we're talking, there's probably some some other profile, maybe some high figure, who's saying some crazy stuff. You know about like white people are the mm-hmm. devil, uh, or the blue eyed devil. You know, and but it's like okay, so what? That's their opinion. Let it happen. Right. Yep. It's, it's like. <sighs> And this this goes into creative writing. This goes into hard. This goes into the. And, 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 and there's a lot of people that it's listen. Be, it's, I'm sorry. Yeah, it's it's because it's because that there's once this shit starts happening, there's no area of speech that is safe. Oh yeah. That's true. None at you, all. You might think that because you write books that you're safe, but you're not. You're really not. Well, yeah. The reason why no. the reason why you think you're safe is because no one's reading your books. <laughs> no one's buying your books. If there were comics, you probably wouldn't be safe. If there were comics, you'd probably mm-hmm. be with the comic gate people. Probably. Maybe. I don't know. I'm just saying. 
because they're having an issue, you know. But books aren't really having an issue because it takes a lot to read a book, really. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it doesn't really take that much to read a book. But um, Well, and look at all these um, people who are getting punished for things. They're getting punished in their job for things they've done away from their job. Um, like the cop out in New York mm-hmm. who was punished mm-hmm. at his job for the content of his stand-up act. Or the um, other one, the stewardess for Delta, I think it was, who was fired from her job because she posted a couple of pictures on her blog that they thought were revealing. But it didn't show the company name on her uniform or anything like that. And the pictures weren't all that revealing. It just showed a little bit of cleavage. You Man. know? And, and that Which is a... used to be the uniform back in the 60s. <laughs> yeah. Hey, hey, you know, and that's the uniform I like. You know what I'm saying? But it's like the social media, the Twitter and the Facebook, it, it's like these people act like fucking rabid, rabid dogs. Just, oh, you don't like something you see. Let's attack that person. Let's destroy mm-hmm. who they are as a person, get rid of their job. I mean, we saw that. With the fucking magazines, we saw that with the, uh, the other shit. I mean, it happens. Mm-hmm. You don't like something, you destroy them. What are you talking about, man? Like, yeah. dude, like, chill the fuck out. Like, it shouldn't be this social media mob mentality. Mm-hmm. But it's the same reason why I'm not using the N-word here. Which, by the way, guys, I've used it before on other shows. I'll be honest with you. I did a, a shit show, a show I used to run called the Shit Show, and the subject was <laughs> words. The subject was uh, words you can't say anymore, and in context, I used a word. Um, mm-hmm. But I, I'm not going to drop it here because it's 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 silly and it, it will cause some problems and problems I want to avoid. Okay, mm-hmm. I'm choosing that option. Maybe I'm cucking. I don't know. I don't see it that way. I'm choosing. I'm just choosing. Okay. Uh, it's, it's so difficult now. Freedom of speech. And. Ah, uh, man. But when, you, when, you're, when you're able to censor yourself and you do it, it doesn't feel as bad when, like, the government steps in or when there's, like, some sort of crazy mob that comes after you. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, you know. And then you, so so where does let's let's do this? This is kind of weird, not weird, but um, so s- accusing somebody of sexual harassment, a la the Me Too movement, without basis, you know, falsely accusing, mm-hmm. um, does not. It's not protected under First Amendment, ladies. No. It's not, not at all. But if you know what it is, that gets to libel in big part, too. Yeah. And um, I could kind of weigh in here a little bit as, a, as an investigator, someone who deals with a lot of uh, allegations kind of going here back and forth. Some yeah. of it are of a sexual nature. Um, it even takes a, it takes a bit to even be libel. I mean, maybe you can prove it. But, I mean... Mm-hmm. You have to be like, man, they were actively saying like so and so was was a rapist when when he wasn't when the allegation was like I'm gonna say it here. They might be giving me in trouble. Well, Kavanaugh, people were saying, oh, he's a rapist. That wasn't the mm-hmm. allegation. That wasn't even the allegation. It was sexual assault. Oh, he's a rapist. That wasn't the allegation. And we're talking about something that happened when he was in high school. Uh, and the and the person talking about it was like kind of spotty on the details. Like I don't I don't know. I listened to both interviews, and even as an investigator, it was like, first off, you're talking about something that happened back in high school. Like how the fuck are you supposed to investigate this now? Right. Like, it's too mm-hmm. much time has passed. Even if you talk to the people that were there at the scene, even they said nothing happened. You don't really know if nothing happened, but you don't know if anything happened. You don't know. Too much time has passed. You definitely don't know enough to say, oh, yeah, it definitely did happen. We're talking about prosecution. You can't just prosecute just based on someone's word here. If that's the case, in my job, 
everyone would have validation on them for abuse uh, if that's mm-hmm. the case. Be like, oh, so and so punched her kid. Okay, that's all I need to know. Take them at their word, right? Listen and believe. Okay, that's all I need to know. Abused, but that's not mm-hmm. what happens. You have to look into into it. People, people don't want to. They don't want to talk about that. They don't. They don't want to get into it. They're afraid of getting into it. Maybe because they think they're gonna realize that it's not really as black and white, or maybe maybe they're wrong. People don't like being wrong. I don't. I don't know, man. Memory is ex- memory is completely unreliable. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's if you know the court system is loves eyewitnesses, but eyewitnesses are horrible. They're horrible, man. Mm-hmm. Horrible. Because you can have you could have six people witness the same event and come up with completely different explanations of what happened. Yeah. Oh, definitely. You know, the other issue when you're getting into libel is the size of the person doing the libeling's microphone. Oh, now, man. you hear it a lot with Donald Trump anymore when he says, oh, I'm going to sue somebody in the press for libel. Well, no, you can't do that because by definition with the law, nobody is assumed to have a bigger microphone than the president of the United States. So right. you cannot libel the president. But, you know, that translates to other stuff, too. Does the person in question have a bigger reach with what they're saying? than the mm. person accusing them. And of course, from my line of work, we're talking about everyday people making allegations on everyday people. Okay. Mm-hmm. Here we're talking about with, with the hashtag, well, not hashtag me too, but we're just talking about allegations. Anyone can say anything about anybody. That's the thing. Um, but freedom of speech, you, you're free to say it, but if, if it's liable... There's the consequence, right? I mean, that's the other thing. Mm-hmm. Like freedom of speech, but not without consequences. But it's like you are you are shielded from the consequence from the government, mm-hmm. unless un- unless it's libel. <laughs> you know? Yeah. You know? Um, I hate that. Now without consequences. Well, it's like well, if you're at a bar and you call a black guy an N word. Well, yeah, there's going to be a consequence. You might get punched in the face. You, you yeah. have the freedom mm-hmm. to say that. You're not free <laughs> sure. from the consequences of saying that. Exactly. Now, you might be able to turn around and sue him for for battery or assault. He might be able mm-hmm. to be like, well, I was provoked. But, I mean, we'll see how that plays out. Usually it plays out in, in favor of whoever gets battered. But, you know, that's how that works. <laughs> but that's a long, that's a whole long winded way in a long process and, per, and expensive, very expensive. It's just, <laughs> but it mm-hmm. kind of goes into a whole other area about consequences for actions. Yeah, man, you could choose your actions, but there's consequences for those actions. At that point, we're not talking about constitutional rights. We're just talking about, I don't know, we're just talking about events and reactions, man. We're talking, talking about, yep. about what happens. Because you don't, you don't do anything in a vacuum. No, no. There are yeah. whatever you do affects somebody, and and somebody might take rather forceful, uh, you know, exception to what you do and say. Now, mm-hmm. I realize we're almost we're actually past time a little bit. Uh, four seconds. Let's do the horrible covers real fast because it's kind All of right. our thing. I shared them in the uh, Skype, but SK probably doesn't have them. You don't have them, do you? Oh, in Skype? <sighs> oh, fuck. You joined, you joined yes. too late. That's, yes. You do no, have them. Okay. I, I, I do have them. All right. The first one I have up right now is the uh, <laughs> the Martin Waddle. What, Waddle? <laughs> Taco Bell destroyed my anus. Oh. Uh. <laughs> Stop lighting matches around my ass. That looks like <laughs> me after I had the uh, the Chalupa box, the, the Chalupa right? Cravings box. <laughs> Man, <laughs> look at that cute. Uh, <laughs> Who's looking up? Painful. 
I mean, I'll never order from the dollar menu again. Oh God! <laughs> I never knew you could light a fart on fire after Taco Bell, and it would burn your hair off. <laughs> but look at him. He's, I mean, that poor kid suffering. <sighs> And this cover is obviously fake. I mean, well, the title's fake. The cover's real. But I'm like looking at this. I'm like, well, what else could it be? Because you see this kid <laughs> saturated in brown water. I mean, it's <laughs> something brown. He's Grandpa ran up. over him with the with the plow. <laughs> <laughs> and, wow. the, and the other son's looking at him down like, oh man. Wait, is that Grandpa or Grandma? I can't tell. I think it's supposed to be Grandpa. The other kid's probably his brother. <laughs> I think so, yeah. Then he has his brother looking down at him. <laughs> oh, man. That's classic, I'm never going to eat fake Mexican food. Uh, it might be fake, but... See, my asshole has built a tolerance to it. It's like, <laughs> I can handle it. It's probably a bad thing. Well, you're in Texas. Yeah. Well, hey, everybody, look at the boy with the golden coal in there. <laughs> <laughs> Some of us just can't. <laughs> <laughs> look at the boy with the golden coal in. That's, that's crazy. <laughs> All right. Let me, uh, that's a new book cover. <laughs> now to get racist here. Now to get racist. Sorry. Uh, choosing the uh, stay the hell away from my beanie babies. Uh, the Hardy Boys with the Mexican on the cover. That's not <laughs> racist. I'm just saying he's Mexican. He's obviously Mexican. They're in Mexico. They're either in Mexico, in, in a Mexico, or they're in uh, like a southern border Cal- town. California. California? <laughs> yeah. Not Texas, because they get assimilated real fast. Yeah. What? What are you doing there, man? You don't you don't mean you live in that the hut. That's the yeah. Oh my god, did you guys ever know people who were beanie baby collectors as investments, uh, long term investments? God, my sister yeah. was. My sister was. Oh, uh man. yeah, I, I knew some people like that. It was like, I just don't think this is a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> and what are those things worth now? Nothing. Pretty that much. That was the right? thing about that trend, Beanie Babies. It was like it was sold like if you keep these animals, they'll be worth more later. But it's like bull fucking shit. <laughs> yeah, I don't right. have any of them now. Neither does my <laughs> sister. It's like what? <laughs> why? Explain why they will be more worth more later. Because you know. With all the other toys. The band. The man. Time. <laughs> Scarcity. 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 The man. There you go. Economics. <laughs> but if there's even a demand for it, is there is there still a demand for Beanie Babies? No. Mm. SK, I no, like I think be- that was a bubble. I would like to believe Definitely you. Definitely a bubble. I would like to believe you, SK, but are we sure that <laughs> are we sure that on eBay right now there's not like a beanie baby for you know, $1,000. Um, Fortune magazine has not done a article on beanie baby millionaires. Okay. And this is coming from <laughs> someone who grew up on playing the NES and a lot of those games certain titles are worth a shit ton of money way way more than what they're actually worth. The original games? Yeah, like the original games like but I guess I guess there is a demand there, huh? Right. People, people actually for really, those. No one really wants yep. a beanie baby. Huh. Now I'm th- speaking of economic bubbles, do you guys know where that came from? The term? Bubble? Yeah. Uh-huh. In economics? Uh-huh. No. Mm-hmm. It actually came from the Dutch and tulips. There was ah. a, there was a oh, tulip the- bubble mm. over there. And they were selling, some of them at the height of it, were selling for the price of a nice house in Amsterdam. I'm not even kidding. Wow. It's really interesting history. I don't think you are kidding. You you are very knowledgeable, man. Wes, you are one smart <laughs> motherfucker. Okay, I'm, I'm putting up a... Uh... And you want to know something else about tulips? We grow a shit ton of tulips here in Washington, Western Washington, 
and they are of such high quality, we sell them to the Dutch. <laughs> oh, well. Yeah, here we go, Dutch tulip mania. All right, the one I put up now is the uh, the Tarzan and the Lost Empire by Edgar Rice Burroughs. Now, dude, dude, do not trust that branch. <laughs> <laughs> not at all. Uh, it's like a cross yeah. between Tarzan and the Wizard of Oz. Yeah, that's <laughs> that. Could, that the cover looks pretty confusing, and actually, for Tarzan, he looks pretty weak. I don't know. All the Tarzan photos or covers I've seen, he's pretty beefy. Um, he seems to be looks very... Looks like, like some kind of flying monkey on his shoulder. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it does. You got a flying monkey. He's sort of strung out. Maybe hit the meth pipe a few times. He still has muscles, <laughs> but, you know, you do that when you're on meth. You do push-ups a lot. Maybe I was some... going to go with LSD because, or, you know... Huh. Um, whatever the equivalent it would be in the jungles of Africa. Huh. What's that plant that they drink? <laughs> the plant that they drink that gives the DMT the high amount that's of... South, that's South America. That's Wariska. Wariska? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, man, I heard good shit about I heard good stuff that's about a, that. that <laughs> there's also some really bad shit with that, and well, it's literal shit. <laughs> I would like... Well, I heard that too, that you shoot your pants. But yeah, um, I would like to do that one day. Uh, as a, as a, we'll make it a trip. A <laughs> live stream the whole thing. Man, uh, okay. In the Amazon you, jungle. You, you're gonna have to have lots of guest hosts because you're gonna be trotting off to with the trots. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Man. Because well, you ate too much Taco Bell. Out of all the bad covers, <laughs> you know, honestly, though, out of all the, I think the, this bad cover segment has uh, um, a bit of tolerance to it, or maybe perspective. Right? This isn't the worst. This is, not, this is not the worst thing ever. No, no, this mm-hmm. is not the worst. Far from it, actually. We, 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 we have seen some horrible shit. Let me, let me put up this. Now I think this might be kind of this might be more of the parody territory right here. Uh, Francis Pascal, Sweet Valley High. <laughs> <laughs> but I only fucked him a little. Will Ronnie Edwards lose the biggest gamble of his life? <laughs> yeah, the thing. Yeah, who's who's uh, doing the speaking on this title? <laughs> uh, it clearly looks like Good the question. dude. It looks like the dude yeah. is doing it. Right? It does. And is that his mom or is that his girlfriend? Um, They're the same height. Good question. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> if that's his mom, then what? What's going on? If that's his girlfriend, then uh, still kind of the same thing, but not as weird, I guess. Although she she does look considerably older, yeah, yeah, short. Though. Maybe it's a little Mrs. Robinson thing going yeah. on. Yeah, I thought I could trust you. You're fucking the other teacher now. You're fucking the coach. <laughs> but you only need, a little. <laughs> well, you need to fuck me a lot, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Patty oh. says he was little. <laughs> Patty's still listening? Hey, Patty. Man, Patty. Miss Brent. Patty, might be past your bedtime. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. You're one of the followers that give this show meaning, honestly. Uh, I say that, man. You're, you're always there. Even when I stream random, you know, just gaming stuff. Not gaying stuff, but gaming stuff. You know, just... Playing games. Shout out shit. to Patty. Yep. Yeah, your comments are cracking us up, Patty. <laughs> Me included. Hey, no, I'm, even, I'm even thinking up. after the stream, I might fire up uh, some Super Mario or something. Hell, who knows? I'm fucking, fucking, some beer in me. I might drink some more. Play some fucking Contra or something. <laughs> there okay, you go. I'll pull up uh, this one. Images you shouldn't masturbate to. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh my! Oh my! Oh my! <laughs> oh man! What's he? What is he doing? Splitting wood in the nude? Uh, oh, that's a double. That's a triple entendre. Right? Wow! Well, who would manhandle that- an axe naked? Like who does that? That's too <laughs> risky, man. Well, at least he doesn't have like a hedge trimmer or a chainsaw. At least it looks, like a, it looks like a fucking battle axe. <laughs> it does. That is wow. not a that is not a tree chopping axe. <laughs> no, no, no. Man. Oh, fuck. Is he is he in water? He's in water, isn't he? I can't tell. I so wish I could blow that up though and take a closer look at that. Oh, that didn't come out right. It looks like he's in a <laughs> pond. Take a closer look at the water. It looks like he's in, like, in a pond of like, like piss or something. Oh, he's speaking of piss. Of speaking of piss. Maybe y'all rip on this cover for like a minute or two. One moment. <laughs> wow. The oh, rent on the beer God. has come due. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Patty wants to know if he's in water, too. We can't figure that out, to be honest with you. Either that or he's in some really deep sand. (laughs) He's swinging an axe in quicksand naked. Who the fuck swings an axe in water to begin with, much less naked? Yeah. (laughs) I have no idea. No idea what he's doing there. Yeah, it does almost look more like sand or almost like a swampy standing in. Yeah. It's huh. that's very strange. Very strange. And he says he's I've, standing in deep shit. Probably. I'd bet fucking money that he's Swedish. <laughs> <laughs> he's a sweet maybe he's a Canadian shit diver. <laughs> he just hasn't put his wetsuit on yet. Hooked up his scuba gear to go snorkeling in the sewers. Oh my word! That is, (laughs) yeah. Uh. (laughs) Fucking Scandinavians, Scandinavians love to get naked. (laughs) They just don't care. (laughs) Yeah, I've got plenty of Scandinavian blood. I'll say that. Not because I like to get naked. I just have a lot of that blood in me. Uh, seriously, I've seen, I've seen, you know, you know, ads. I saw this ad in a grocery store. You know, they'll have a little banner ad up hanging from the rafters, kind of thing, and it was for some fucking baby powder or lotion or some shit. And there mm-hmm. was the mom and this young child were wearing towels mm. around their waists. Uh huh. <laughs> wow. And, and just the towels around their waists <laughs> in oh. the grocery store, advertising some baby powder or some shit. Dang. Wow, just towels oh. around their waist. What? Yeah. Apparently, man, they they're not bothered by it. We have come to the conclusion that this guy is a sewer diver who just has not put on his wetsuit and scuba gear to go down ah, into that makes sense. the so he's, shitter. He's cutting through <laughs> the fat. He's cutting through the he fat, 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 fat shit. Yeah, okay. Chop the fat berg. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> I think... Is that all the covers? I think the movie all the covers we have. Yeah, I know we're going to talk about spam emails, but we're kind of out of time. But maybe we could do that mm-hmm. on another day. I mean, it's Nigerian yeah. scams. You know, we all know what they are. Oh, yeah, <laughs> Dude, yeah and I could save my reply that I wrote to one. On a future yeah. episode, uh, one thing we might want to talk about, some people want to talk about anyway, is uh, unsolicited dick pics. The uh, uh, what, what do you what, what do you call them? You call them the hooker bots on Facebook? I don't know, what, what do you call them, SK? Those unsolicited dick pics you always get. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, friends we have that haven't haven't met yet. <laughs> <laughs> 
Where are my unsolicited yeah. tit pics? Is what I want to know. Right. Um, <laughs> and apparently, like, uh, Chad, try and get a solicited one. <laughs> I, pff, good luck on that. I do that. Next yeah. thing I know, I'm like reported. Jesus, I, I thought we we're good here. <laughs> what? Um, <laughs> no, nah, I'm a married man. I gotta be good. <laughs> no, but then you have hooker bots, which apparently are like. Uh, these chicks that pop out of nowhere on Facebook, they have like brand new accounts. Who are they? I don't know, but they seem very flirty. They friend everybody. You probably know, you know who I'm talking about, right? You know what yeah, I'm talking yeah. about? I've, okay. I've seen yeah, few, I've seen one or two. Okay. They don't bother me too much. No. Well, I, well, I mean, I don't, I don't get many friend requests from them. They might mm-hmm. think you're too old. I don't know. I get a bunch. Or maybe, maybe... <laughs> I don't know, man. Maybe I send the wrong signals. Yeah, there's, there's, <laughs> I, you know, it's interesting because I know it'll be interesting to talk about that because I know some women get a ton of unsolicited dick pics and some women don't. And I know some mm-hmm. that don't that I would think would just because of right their, uh, the way they look. How can I say that without being? An asshole, but you know what I'm but saying. But that's who they tar- That's who you would expect them to. You would expect someone like that to be targeted. Yeah, that's but what then, you're saying. And maybe let me talk to her. Maybe see see if she would chime in on that episode. That's future. Cool. I think next we we have it fully booked. But uh, no, whenever we have time to shoot the shit, it's something to talk about. Um. Mm-hmm. I think we reached in here. I think I might stream later on uh, after a minute of setting up some. Uh, I don't know, man. I don't know what I want to play. I'm, I'm gonna wing it. I'm gonna wing it. Fucking wing it. Um, wing. Anyway. Buffalo wing it. Buffalo wing it. Guys, ladies, Patty, anyone else watching? Thank you so much. Y'all make it worth worthwhile. <laughs> We gotta grow this channel, grow this show. I know it's on a platform that no one knows about, but we can do it. Come on! Right now we're at forty-three followers. Let's get spread the good word. Come on! Hallelujah! Uh, <laughs> man, you could just share this episode around and be like, "You won't believe what they said about freedom of speech." Oh my god! And that would be definitely <laughs> triggering enough. Just trigger them. <laughs> nothing, nothing like a good mm-hmm. controversy. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Let's get some rage bait over here. Anyway. <laughs> y'all take it easy. Thank you so much. Night. Have a great weekend.